The takeaway message of this article is that every clinician, every generalist or specialist can and should know about myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome, often shortened to MECFS. Understanding and correctly applying the MECFS diagnostic criteria can help clinicians recognize this debilitating multisystem illness and use existing tools and resources to provide a high standard of care. My name is Lucinda Bateman. I'm an internal medicine physician living in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I want to tell you about this article uh, we're publishing entitled Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, Essentials of Diagnosis and Management. This article concisely summarizes the extensive evidence regarding the epidemiology, the known physiology, and clinical presentation of this illness. While the exact etiology of MECFS is uncertain, studies show neurologic, immunologic, autonomic, and energy metabolism impairments. It suggests a comprehensive diagnosis approach and tips for asking the right questions. In 2015, the Institute of Medicine, now the National Academy of Medicine, conducted an evidence-based review and published clinical diagnostic criteria that have now been adopted across federal agencies, including the CDC and the NIH. These evidence-based clinical criteria have clarified the core common features of MECFS that distinguish it from other ordinary chronic fatigue illnesses. The core illness features are, um, in the beginning, impaired function, impaired cognitive, physical, and, and exercise function. Um, and the flip side is post-exertional malaise, which is essentially illness worsening from attempts to maintain normal physical and cognitive activities. The additional core criteria are disordered unrefreshing sleep, cognitive impairment, and orthostatic intolerance from autonomic nervous system dysregulation. These diagnostic features, impaired function, post-exertional malaise, unrefreshing sleep, and either cognitive impairment or orthostatic intolerance, when assessed for uh, severity at least moderate to severe and for frequency at least 50% of the time. And when these core features are all present together, this is a very good diagnostic tool. Most of all, the article outlines the many aspects of illness that respond to management. There has often been a feeling that this is an illness that can't be treated. It is a difficult chronic illness and debilitating. And making a diagnosis is one thing, but knowing about what to do about it can be much more intimidating for clinicians. Clinical guidance for MECFS has been scarce, obsolete, or even potentially harmful despite decades of scientific research, as we have lacked a specific diagnostic test and because of changing diagnostic criteria. And particularly in the past, use of very restrictive research criteria in a clinical setting. The Institute of Medicine criteria help get around this and help every clinician have the ability to make the diagnosis and begin um, treatment. And while form formal treatment guidelines have not been established, this publication has combined the collective clinical knowledge of 21 MECFS specialists with decades of experience to provide practical treatment advice for symptoms and common comorbid conditions. Every practicing cl clinician is likely to encounter this illness, yet standard lab tests and routine cursory evaluations can miss the diagnosis. Yet this, uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic may even double the number of people in the US who meet MECFS criteria. We hope this informative article will lead to much earlier diagnosis and more favorable prognosis. There are many aspects of illness that can be treated that might uh, improve the long-term uh, consequences of this horrible post-viral condition. The next step um, is that we, with, with adequate funding and very large numbers of people who may be developing a post-viral syndrome after COVID-19, uh, we need to learn everything we can about post-viral syndromes, especially the immune and neurologic conditions. I hope you find this article informative and useful and uh, that it 
helps you feel much more confident making a diagnosis and taking care of any aspect of illness that the patient presents with. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.